Hello everyone, so today's video is going to be a little bit different. We're talking about the top 5 mistakes that new players of squad make, and this came up because recently I teamed up with Icelandic Gamer Girl to get a couple of games in with a full squad of newbies, and boy oh boy was it fun and very eye-opening. So these are the 5 things that I noticed while playing on that night, and in the background you have some b-roll footage of matches of when we played. But before we do move on guys, just one quick announcement. I just want to let you guys know that our new merch design is up and it has been selling like hotcakes. You guys love this new design. I think it's because of all the colors, but let me know down in the comments below if you have other merch designs and why you like this one so much. So now let's jump straight into it. The first mistake that most new players have is not asking enough questions. Squad leaders are usually more than happy to answer questions if you take the initiative to ask them. If you're using a lat kit for the first time, you can say, hey, squad leader or anyone in the squad, is there anything I should know before I fire this thing? If you have questions on how certain mechanics work, squad players are more willing to help you figure something out than watch you struggle with it for 10 or so minutes, especially when something is very important. They're more likely to help you learn that topic and that subject rapidly so you can assist the team as fast as possible so don't be afraid to ask certain questions regarding mechanics that being said it does help if you do some research and do some practice in the fire range and tutorial before so that you don't really have that many questions but squad is a massive game it's very complex you are going to have things that you do not know or do not understand do not be afraid to ask your squad and use them as a resource this is when it is really helpful to make sure you get into a good community and find a good squad leader so that you can have a solid experience even if you're new not all squad leaders expect you to operate amazingly they want you to be able to ask questions and figure out things and think for yourself to some extent Coming up at number two, the second mistake that new players have is following the SL too well. Now, it's a very delicate balance between following the SL and taking initiative. One of the things that I did notice was new players tend to hug their SLs and friendlies. Just know that squad is a pretty big game. There's a lot of space on these maps. You don't need to be within five meters of the SL. The general rule of thumb is you want to be close enough to your squad leader that if he calls for movement, you can rapidly get up to him and move with the squad. You don't want to be too far away that you're lagging or spreading out the squad and things get too split up but you don't want to be so close that one grenade can kill you this is also doubly important because the more you spread out and the different angles that you can cover as a squad the more security you can provide for your squad and the unit as a whole so spreading out and making sure you're locking down different angles is something that you need to do on your own and take the initiative for unless the squad leader has specifically told you to stand and look a certain direction this is something that you need to be doing because what new players tend to do is group up and look at each other which means there's no security and you're really 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 easy to kill from any kind of frag or he or splash damage so always remember that you do have some autonomy in your squad and that you need to be mindful of your spacing and locking down different sectors coming in at number three is players get really really scared players get really scared in squad because they don't want to die they don't want to deal with the death timer and that is one of the best things about squad is that it's one of the only fps games that makes players think before they move instead of just die give up die give up run and gun shooters like call of duty or battlefield now on this note it gets really problematic when sls or teams are trying to push objectives through corridors or buildings what you'll notice is newer players tend to get choked up and blocked around the doors because no one wants to be that first guy in well, guess what? On most assaults, someone has to die. The first guy might die. The second guy might die. The third guy might die going in the building. But so long as that momentum on the assault is continued, the third, fourth, fifth, and up will be able to breach the building. But when you don't push, no one will get in the building. So just knowing that you need to keep up that tempo and that aggression on the assault. And when the squad leader tells you to breach a building or to assault, there will be some moments where you do want to take it slow and get a frag around the corner or pie something off. But for the most part, if you see 10 guys near you and they're all stacked up and they're waiting for you to get the hell out of the doorway someone in the front has to go through and that person will die but the team will benefit so just know that sometimes you do have to die for the cause in order for the team to accomplish its objective number four is knowing when to give up this is a question that a lot of new players have while they're playing squad they die they die with the squad they get wiped but they don't necessarily know how to read the map to know whether or not they should be giving up the general rule of thumb is if there's a medic within 50 or so meters of you, don't give up, wait for the medic and save the ticket. If everyone within 100 meters of you has died or gotten blown up, then definitely take a look at your map. If you see all this faded out icons, give up, respawn with the squad. You definitely don't need to wait for the SL to tell you when to give up and when not to. These are two pretty easy guidelines to know if you should be holding tickets or if you shouldn't. One thing I do want to know and is a little more advanced is the concept of trading tickets for pressure. Sometimes, commonly during assaults, 
SLs or leadership will tell you to give up and instantly respond because they're trading those tickets to get more pressure on the map to get more pressure on the objectives rapidly instead of waiting for medics because every time you wait for a medic yes you are saving the ticket but you're giving up map control because you don't have players on the map so whenever you hear burn the tickets I need bodies not tickets that usually means that the SL is trying to make an extremely aggressive play and he needs you guys to be giving up so you guys can get into the fight as fast as possible one thing that's kind of tied to giving up and the spawn mechanics is calling out when the rally time is coming down. Rallies are on a 60 second refresh. That means every 60 seconds, the entire squad will be able to spawn on the rally unless you catch it in like the last 10%. So this means that if you're sitting in the rally spawn and you notice it's coming down to 15 seconds out of 60, that means in 15 seconds, the squad will be able to spawn. You should be calling out for your team because if you have guys who are dead out there that are ready to respawn, you can call out spawns in 15, hit the spawn now, and they'll be able to catch that wave so that they can get in to the fight faster. So telling people when the rally is coming up for refresh or when the rally is ready to spawn, that's really important information that you can share that players enjoy hearing. The fifth and final mistake that I see players make is not taking the initiative and being too hesitant. This happens especially with new players because they're new players. They don't feel confident in the game. They don't know what they're doing. But if the SL asks for someone to do something, most likely if you just say, sure, I'll do it. Can you teach me how real fast? That's completely fine. But when the SL asks for someone, step up, step up to the plate. It's the fastest way you're gonna learn is by doing. And if you aren't confident, ask. You'll become a better player. SLs love these kind of players that can take the initiative, step up to the plate, and ask questions when needed. So be that model squad member. Just remember that the squad leader is there to help you, to guide you. If you have a toxic SL or an SL that does not use his mic, find a different squad because this game is community focused and communication centric. So you need to make sure that you're finding the good experience for yourself. Squad is a huge game about taking the initiative. You need to make sure that you're getting the experience that you want. Looking at it from the perspective of the SL, we talked about this a little bit before. SLs are not there to micromanage you. They don't have the time. They're trying to work the map, talk to other squads, coordinate attacks, and get their squad moving together cohesively. So it's important to know and recognize that the SL is not going to sit there and tell you exactly what to do every step of the way. So general rules of thumb, which is a general kind of overview of what we talked about, stay close to the SL. You don't need to be on his ass, but definitely don't be 100 meters out in the wind. You want to make sure that when the SL calls for movement, you can get there quickly and move with the squad. One of the things that drives SLs absolutely crazy is having a squad that is spread out that cannot react rapidly to movement calls. So definitely make sure that you're in that range band so that you can cover sectors autonomously but still move with the squad cohesively when needed a reminder that squad leaders and squad mates absolutely love it when new players ask relevant questions do not clog up the squad comms with irrelevant information or chatter use local for that but any questions that is relevant to what you're doing squad members are more than likely going to help answer that question because we want you to be competent we're your teammates we want you to know what you're going to do because the better you do your job the more likely the squad will be able to stay alive and complete its mission don't get too scared i know it's extremely overwhelming and you need to enjoy that experience but know that in specific situations when the sl calls for aggression and the breach or push someone needs to go through that door first it's gotta be someone if everyone just stares at the door no one is getting in so sometimes you do have to realize that you will have to give your life for the emperor sometimes during a match a recap of giving up and respawning, a reminder that if you are playing a match and you don't have anyone near you that can revive you or will revive you, it's usually okay to give up. And if you have a medic right on top of you, do not touch that give up button unless explicitly told by the SL. And SLs might call for you to give up when medics are nearby if they're looking to add pressure to the map. And a recap of the final point, guys, don't be too hesitant and take the initiative. Squad is a game that rewards people who are willing to step up to the plate, cover a sector, do a certain job, and as a whole, the team will respect you and thank you because it is impossible for squad leaders to micromanage the eight people in their squad. Sometimes if you have a competent squad, you'll get fire team leaders and they can kind of fill that role. But in most public games, there aren't going to be fire team leaders that can assist you with this. So take the initiative. If squad leader needs something to happen, volunteer, you'll learn how to to do it you'll get better at the game and you'll grow your game sense 
And lastly, guys, the bonus number six mistake is not making enough friends and not getting into a community. I highly recommend for any platoon shooter that you go in and you find friends, you make friends, or you join a squad community. There are three communities that I recommend to new players. That's going to be squad ops, the ones that I own. You can join that at squadops.gg. You have the potato fields, which is run by Moy Dog, and then you have the playground, which is a community run new player friendly server. So those are the three beginner communities that I recommend to every squad mate and just remember to have fun make friends and be the model squad member make it easy for the sl don't make the game harder the game is already as complex as it is the last thing that you want to do is add stress to your teammates or leadership but that's all i've got for you guys today i do hope you enjoyed today's video as always don't forget to like comment and subscribe for more content and if you're looking to pick up a copy of squad you can always head over to karmacut.com where any game purchase or official merch purchase supports the channel directly and finally guys if you do want to check out icelandic gamer girls channel you can check it out in the link down below she streams on twitch and makes a couple of youtube videos but that's all i've got for you guys today i do hope you enjoyed this top five mistakes video i have a lot more learning and informational content coming soon so make sure you subscribe and hit that bell button but until next time guys as always good hunting